City Church. Happy Easter Sunday. Why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Amen. We have a risen Savior to praise this morning. Are you ready to praise Him? Amen. All right, let's praise Him together. We what is He here to the sun. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. I want you to find someone, maybe someone you don't normally talk to, greet them, 
Tell them happy Easter. Look them in the eyes. Tell them it's amazing that you're here. It's so good to be here in the house of God. Fantastic. You may be seated. You know, there is a buzz in the room. And I don't think it's just the hot cross buns with melted butter. Who, who's a hot cross bun fan? Give me, give me, give me a wave. Now, oh. who likes the new chocolate? And yeah, who's a purist? Thank you. I'm in the right place. You know, just a few announcements before we've got we've got a, a great item and a few things coming up in a moment. But um, let me just tell you a bit about what we've got on offer you for you guys on a Monday night. Everyone say Monday night, not this Monday night, right, Christina? No, not Easter Monday. On every Monday night, 6 p.m., we have what we call prayer rooms. And uh, it's an opportunity for you to come in here and have one-on-one -on -one prayer with a team of people. It happens on a Monday night, and there's a great worship space you walk into. And uh, Christina, stand up for a second. Come on, Christina. She, she doesn't like to be mentioned. But her and her team, amazing job. And, uh, you know, like they pray literally for hours for people that really need it. And uh, we, we believe in the power of prayer. Is that all right? And uh, we believe it's got power in your life. And so on a Monday night, you can come here, 6 p.m. But I also want to mention on your seat, you should see a flyer. It's called the Easter Celebration. Now, it's not this weekend. It's actually on the 22nd of April, which is actually at least two weeks from now on a Saturday and uh, we've been working on this. We've been working on getting all our denominations in the area together, all the different Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Uniting, um, ACC, Pentecostal, um, Baptist. Um, I think we've got quite a few other denominations, Coptic churches as well. We've managed to put them together. We've got the government behind it, state government. Where he's going to be there, Chris Minns is going to be there, possibly even the Prime Minister, I've been told. And we've been working on this in the background simply because we believe that we need an opportunity in our world to get those that love Christ and love the message of Easter together across every denomination. And this is the first of our events. My dream five years from now is that we're marching over the Harbour Bridge with thousands. Come on. We've done it outside of Easter because a lot of churches focus on Easter on a weekend. And so we've done it two weeks out, but it's going to be all about Easter. It's going to be about Good Friday and about Resurrection Sunday. And do you know what? I've sat in a room with all these denominations, <clears throat> and I basically said, do we all agree in the message of Good Friday? Wholeheartedly. Catholics, Greek, Orthodox, yes. Do we believe in the message of Resurrection Sunday? Wholeheartedly, Yes. Well, let's keep it at that. And let's just let the world know that we love Christ. Amen? So if you've got time, please be there. Turn up. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be items from churches, from all the denominations, and speeches from politicians and all sorts of things. And our worship team is actually leading out in worship for all these people. So a uh, big deal. And we'll see. See what God does with it. We're going to give Him the opportunity and the space to do something amazing in our city. Is that all right? 
But right now, we're on here on Resurrection Sunday. And we've got this amazing, I think, very talented and an incredible, I think, woman of God who's going to come and share around communion. So if you haven't got a communion element in your hand, our team can get one to you, but you should have got one coming through the door. But I'm going to invite Jules right now to come and share with us. Good morning, church. How are we doing? Good. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord on Resurrection Sunday? Yes. Amen. If you haven't been handed communion, make sure to give us a wave so you can grab some. Our ushers will hand that out if anyone's missing some. Yep. Everybody else, make sure you grab your communion. Before we jump into it, I just wanted to to sort of take a moment to remember why we take communion. See, in the Bible, before Jesus was handed over to the cross, he says to his disciples as he's, he's there in the Last Supper, he says, do this in remembrance of me. You know, we're taking a moment now and we're remembering what it is that Jesus did for us on that cross. The greatest act of love ever in the history of all time that only Jesus could do. And I want to read 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And I don't know about you, but I am grateful today, and I'm grateful every morning for that act of love, that Jesus took our place on that cross, that he became sin so that we may know right standing, righteousness with God. What a powerful, powerful act of love. And this morning, we have the joy of celebrating that it did not just end there. But as we know, three days later, he was raised from the dead, that death could not hold him, that he was raised. We celebrate that this morning. We celebrate and we remember the grace, the mercy, and the righteousness that we receive through Jesus. And so just for a moment, I might get you guys to stand with me as we take communion. Just for a moment, if we could have every eye closed. Why don't you take a moment to just thank him. Thank him for his sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we just remember you, Father. We remember the sacrifice you made for us. Thank you, Lord. And we take this bread in remembrance of your body that was broken on the cross. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we take this cup. Father, we are thankful for the blood that was shed on the cross, Lord so that we may have righteousness in you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you in this place this morning, Lord. We set our eyes upon you, Lord, that in you, Father, though your body was broken and your blood was shed, Father, that you rose again. And we exalt you this morning, Lord God. Father, we step and we live in that new covenant, Lord God. Father, that you have declared that death could not hold you, Lord. Father, we just praise you this morning and we remember the sacrifice, Lord, and we praise you, Father, that you rose again. And God, I just pray in every single person in here, Lord God, that you remind them, Lord, remind them of the sacrifice you made, Father, that we would never forget it, Lord, that we would live in remembrance of you, Lord. Father, that we would praise you and exalt you all the days of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, why don't you find your seats? We've got an amazing video, an item from our team that's going to come up on the screens now. Thank you. I was lost. I was lost. I was lost. I was lost. I was afraid. I was broken. I was hopeless. 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 My relationships. My identity. My past. My past. 
My present? My future? My spirit was lost. Afraid, broken, and hopeless. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God stepped into my life. Stepped into my life. God stepped into my brokenness. Into my addictions. My fear. Into my marriage. My trauma. My grief. My baggage. God stepped into my life. Into my life. Into my life. Into my life. He spoke forgiveness into my past. Peace into my present. And hope into my future. God spoke courage into my fear. Spoke healing into my brokenness. He brought beauty from ashes. He brought life from death. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Now I'm found. I was once blind, but now I see. I see. I see. I see. I don't have all the answers, and I don't know what tomorrow holds. But one thing I do know. Hope has a name. Peace has a name. Forgiveness. Justice. Kindness. And joy has a name. Life has a name. Love has a name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And his name. His name. His name. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And his name is Jesus. 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 Jesus.
just for a moment, why don't we close our eyes? Come on. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you in this place. You were sent as the only begotten Son. You knew your purpose. You knew your plan. As a man, you knew the pain, the agony, the anguish. You knew what you were facing. The accusations, the torment, the torture. And yet you went willing. And we thank you in this place. We thank you for your sacrifice. But we thank you that you are the Son of God the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you prove it to the skeptics. You, you prove it, proved it to the world. And for 2,000 years, we've gathered around your resurrection, around your power. And we've experienced it. We've felt it. We thank you for your new life. We thank you that we have a second chance. We have a new life in us because of you. And we honor you in this place. Come on, one more time. Come on, come on, church. Let your heart be captivated this morning. Come on. the Easter message. I love Easter. And it's not because of Easter eggs. It's because of my Jesus. Nothing wrong with chocolate. But I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Why don't you turn to the person next to you, tell them how much you love Jesus on this Easter Sunday. Give our worship team a hand. You may be seated. Great sense of the presence of God in this place. <sighs> Easter Sunday. You know, we had an amazing service on Friday. I think our team did really, really well. Good Friday for us. For us at Bay City, Good Friday, I think for a lot of our church people, it's all about just serving the people that we look after midweek. We had a beautiful meal. And I'll tell you what, I think there's nothing more exciting for me than when someone encounters Christ. And uh, I got dragged outside by a guy, not physically dragged outside, 
and he was shaking and in tears and trying to understand what had happened to him. And he was saved. Amen? Beautiful guy, spiritual guy. Looked at his life in all different places. And, uh, and he just kept on shaking and crying and saying, I don't understand. This was a setup. I don't know how I got here. And I said, absolutely, it was a setup. God's into setting things up. Amen? Who got saved because of a God setup? I did, 100%. So good to have you here on Easter Sunday. I read a scripture on Friday night. I don't want to jump into it again. It's, it's the basis of what I want to talk about, what I talked about on Friday night. I want to continue. Acts 13. Everyone say Acts 13. Who loves the Word of God? Verse 38 says, Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man, is preached to you forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could be justified by the law of Moses. I love this because because it's just a simple, simple, I think it's a simple gospel message and a beautiful couple of verses. On Good Friday, we focused on verse 38. It says, Therefore, let it be known unto you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And we talked about the cross, how we needed a perfect Savior. I had some good feedback. We have community people who aren't church people, and this guy in particular and a few others said to me, it was good that you said the church and religion weren't, aren't perfect. Amen? Because they're not. I'm, I'm the pastor here at Bay City, one of many leaders in this church, and I can tell you I'm not perfect. Therefore, this church is not perfect. And if you're in it, it's definitely not perfect. Amen? Religion isn't perfect. The church isn't perfect. But guess what? Jesus is. And he actually had to be perfect for him to do what he did. He's sinless. He's beautiful. He had to go to the cross, and he could only do it as a perfect sacrifice. Amen? And he's the head of this church. He loves it. He knows you're in it. <clears throat> he knows Pastor Andrew's in it. He knows that there's leaders in this place that aren't perfect, but he works with us and through us and in us to achieve what he wants. Amen? But I love that. It's through him that we enter the doorway. It's through him that we find this incredible life, this perfect life. And it's almost like through him you enter into a world. But I want to focus on that next verse, verse 39, because it tells us, let me read it again. And by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could be justified by the law of Moses. See, part two of that. Part one is you enter through Christ, through salvation. Amen. Perfect sacrifice. None of us could achieve it. None of us could do it. You enter into this world. When you get in this new life, this new world, everything is by Him. Everyone say by Him. Amen. See, for us as believers in this place, by Him is everything. You see, if you want to go a step backwards before you entered through Him, that's the door of salvation. Literally, it's a door. As soon as you enter through it, you're in this new world, which is by Him. Amen? It's called salvation. It's called the kingdom of God. And this world, you want to know what this world is operated and governed by and looked after by? The Word of God. That's the promised land. It's like the promises of this world we live in is in God's Word. And when you're in that world, you don't live, you're in this world, but you're of another world now. Is that all right? That doesn't mean you get weird. That's what the Word of God says. We're in this world, but we're not of it because we're actually owned by Christ. Amen? And every promise in the Word of God creates and frames this world we live in. We live under a different king and a different kingdom. We respect the government of this day. Absolutely, Jesus did. He says, to Caesar, give to Caesar. But we live in a different world now. 
We live under a, a different system. See, before you entered through the door of Christ and before everything was by Christ, I think everything was just by us. Amen? Who can remember what they lived like and what they thought like before they became a Christian? Give me a wave. Some of you have probably just gone from child to Christian and you've morphed all the way through that. But your happiness, your fulfillment, your freedom, your decisions were made by us. They were determined. Even in our minds, we thought our eternity was determined by us. Even Frank Sinatra sang a song that unfortunately is one of the most listed and requested songs at people's funerals. And that is, I did it my way. Sad, right? Because the reality is when you become a believer, it's basically by Him. Amen? It's not just about us anymore. And that's actually encouraging for every single one of us in this room. Amen? You're not in this alone. You're not trying to establish your Christian life and, and all that God's got for you by yourself. It's by Him. Acts 13, 38. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached you the forgiveness of sin. There's the door through. And verse 39. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which we could be justified by the law of Moses. You're not going to live up to all that God has on you unless it's by him. Amen. It's important that we could understand this. It's a door of forgiveness, and then we walk into a new Room. But we as believers, um, we might start thinking again in our heads um, that we have to start getting everything right before we approach Christ. And I mean sometimes in prayer, and sometimes I mean when we come to church, we kind of think we've got to get it. I can't go back to church, um, and they're not going to accept me because I've got all this wrong in my life, and I've got all these things I've got to do, and, I, and I've stopped praying, and I've stopped connecting with God because I've got all these things wrong in my life. You're missing the point. Because it's by him that he gives you the power to defeat those things in your life that you need to defeat. Amen? Sadly, sometimes I've had, the, had this, someone says, says to me, you know, I, I just don't want, don't want to come to church anymore. Why? Why? Because I'm just not a good person. I'll get my life together. I'll get it right, and then I'll come back into church. And missing the point. Amen? You try and get your life together without Jesus, give it a go. I've tried. It doesn't work. See, the gospel, we know as believers, we understand that we only are saved through him, right? But somehow when we jump into the kingdom of God and we get saved, somehow we then think, oh, no, it's, it's, all, it's all about us now. We forget that it's now by him. Amen. He's given you a power. And we're going to jump into that. It's a long way back to the steps. I should be jumping up there, but I could do an injury. <laughs> then someone have to carry me out and get messy. Everyone say Resurrection Sunday. But how do we live by him? Well, that's why we're here today, Resurrection Sunday. Simply put, it's a power that enables us. This is what Resurrection Sunday is all about. That's why it's celebrated. That's why we know the story of Christ. It was the door by him, by him, that door. It was That's Friday. That's the cross. Amen. A perfect sacrifice had to be one sacrifice. It was a plan from heaven, God's plan. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. His Son was sent. He was the only one that could do it to pay that perfect price for all of us to step through. And then Resurrection Sunday is when we get the power to live the way God wants us to live. Amen. It's the new life we have. 
I'm not going to read it. I haven't got time. Luke 24, verse 1 to 10 tells us the, the story of, uh, of the resurrection and, and how they, they said, and I'll just jump into verse 4. It says, and, and as they were much perplexed about it, it happened that behold, two men stood by then in shining garments, and they, they were afraid and bowed their faces down to the earth, and they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Amen? This resurrection power we have, it's a power that changes us. Amen? How many people in this, in this place, you, you, you have in your heart a desire and a heart to live a good life, to, to, to achieve, to do things that you know you should be doing for, for God and, and for those around you. you? You need this power to do it. Amen? I generally think most people are really good. I generally do. I get myself in trouble when I think that way all the time. But generally, I think most people have a desire to do good things. The difference is that we need a power to help us do it. Amen? And Christ is that power. He is that resurrection power. It's its ability that's re released to us to change everything. This is what happened on Resurrection Sunday. It changed everything. The Apostle Paul knew it in Philippians 3 verse 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. I mean, let's have a quick look at that word study for just a moment in, on the word power. In Philippians 3.10, the Greek word is dunamis. Everyone say dunamis. There's two parts to that word power. And the Greek word, the power of dunamis, can be understood in two ways. First of all, the first way, it's dynamite. Everyone say dynamite, which is an explosive force. And the second part of that word is dynamo, which is a constant flow of power. That's what we get. A, a turning dynamo creates power. And if we look at these two words, we understand what God has done in us at Resurrection Sunday. On Resurrection Sunday, you had an explosion of power. When you got saved, just at that same power that raised Jesus from the dead gets put into you in the form of a new life, and everything is different. Come on. Everyone say amen. You're a new creation. You're not the same anymore. You're completely reconfigured. You're completely different. You run from a different source of power. You run under a different kingdom. You have everything about you, whatever you were struggling with in the past, whatever you were trying to overcome, maybe addictions, maybe all sorts of things. You are different now because of Jesus. It's like there's a big reset, bang, when you get saved. You've got an incredible second chance. And it's not a second chance like you used to know. It's a completely different because you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you've got the opportunity to take on those things in your life with the power of Christ. Amen? And you're not alone for a second. Are you with me? It's like in your darkest place, you can just close your eyes and know that Christ is in you. His Spirit is is in you. It's a fresh start. Amen? You had a, a, a penalty of death on your life. When at that moment of salvation, boom, everything changed in your world, and now you've got eternity set before you in heaven. It's, it's got a ripple effect that goes into eternity in front of you. Suddenly now you have a, a life that's eternal with, his, with your heavenly Father for eternity. Eternity. Eternity is like eternity, right? It never stops. Everyone say amen. But the power of your old life, those things that drag and tug at you, you know, the old nature, the old flesh, the things that you know that you know you shouldn't do. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I know, I know the things that I ought to do, the things I don't do. He's basically saying, by the grace of God, I've got a power in me that stands against those things that I know I shouldn't do. Amen? You're not on it. 
It's not, not by yourself anymore. You've got a power behind you that can, and in you that can change everything. That word dynamo is a constant flow. So the first one's dynamite, comes from the word dynamite. And the second one comes from the word dynamo. Which it, it, it's a constant flow of power to change. Can I just say, by him, we can change. Who knows they could be better than what they are right now? Come on. I think we have an understanding. Of, unfortunately, the way our psychology works is we focus on the negative more than the positive. Psychology tells us if I said one negative thing to you, you're going to think about that for the next week. I could say 10 positive things. And you're, th you're going to think about the one negative thing, unfortunately. That's why the news works so well. It's filled with, and then they, you know, they, they have all these negative stories, and then they throw in a cat story at the end. You know, we saved a cat. And everyone goes, oh, but we're all dying from earthquakes and disease and everything else. It's because of the way we work. But this, this power... Ephesians 1 verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of the power towards us who, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly, uh, in heavenly places. In other words, that power is constantly working in your life when we tap into it. Amen. By him power. The power is constant in our lives, and it's, 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 it's a power that gives us hope. I, I love this. I did a quick little thing between optimism is a great thing, but, but hope is different. Amen? For us as believers, optimism is fantastic. There's a lot of people that have optimism out there, and they think things are going to be amazing. Let me. Optimism is a wish without a guarantee. Christian hope is a certainty guaranteed by God himself. There's a difference. Amen? I can run out life thinking, oh, this is, I hope this works out. Ready? One, two, three, here we go. And I run into life thinking this is going to work out. And then, and then the difference is in, when you've got a Christian hope, it just, you can actually jump into things that are real, like maybe Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's not guaranteed by me, it's guaranteed by him. Amen. We need more than just optimism. We need hope. And this is the resurrection brings hope, it brings power. Optimism reflects um, um, ignorance as to whether good things will ever actually come our way. Christian hope expresses knowledge that Every day of our life and every moment beyond it, we as believers can say with truth on the basis of God's own commitment to us that it's going to get better. Amen? So why is this Easter resurrection such a big deal? Because it is. Acts 13, 38 to 39, get the band to come up now, it'd be great. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you were not, could not be justified by the law of Moses. They're nice and rowdy up there. They must have found some Easter eggs. I know most believers in this place. We get salvation happens through him. But I want to I, I wanna just make sure that you don't forget that our lives are powered by him. Amen? That the change you want in your life is powered by him, not by yourself. And I know it's not an easy thing to be, you know, in, in our world we can be dragged back very quickly to by us. Come on. We can be, we can just forget of the resurrection power and all the might and all that Christ did for us. 
When you look at the life of Jesus, he spent so much time in prayer and communication with his Father. Why? Because it was by him. He was exampling by him. Are you with me? Yeah, he was the Son of God, but he allowed himself to be encapsulated into a human body and underwent the same temptations, maybe a little bit more than you and I have been tempted. I haven't been dragged up on top of the mountain, a mountain by the devil himself. Not yet anyway. Look forward to that. Maybe not. After fasting 40 days, I haven't been through those sort of intense te temptations, but Jesus knew it was by him, his heavenly Father, Holy Spirit's power in his life. Amen. He exampled to us. He exampled to us in the Garden of Gethsemane when he dropped to his knees and he said, if you can take this from me, if you can take this, this, this agony and this pain that I'm facing, and he, but he said, but, but not, not my will, but your will be done. That power comes from God. Amen. There are decisions like that in your life all the time that you know, you know, you know, you're about to face something. Should I do that? I shouldn't be doing it. I know I shouldn't be doing it. I know that's not who I am. I know that's not who I am. And maybe you should drop to your knees, maybe internally or whatever way, and just get, and then just go, hey, God, not my will, that your will be done. Because your will is a perfect will for my life. Are you with me? The Apostle Paul in Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Oh man, he got it. He got it. He got it. He lived a life that was crazy before. He was persecuting Christians. Are you with me? When he was running things himself. He ran into Jesus like we did, and Jesus flipped him, turned him on his inside out, and he became this powerhouse for the kingdom of God to a point where he gets and says, it's not me. He got to a point where this resurrection power in him took him over. And I reckon he would have got to a point where people didn't know where Paul started and Jesus finished, amen? Because of the Spirit of Christ was permeating every form of his personality. We all have that power. Amen? And you might think, oh, what, how do I get that power, Pastor? How do I build that power? Well, you've got to climb a mountain full of broken bottles on your knees and you've got to crawl up. No. No. You wake up in the morning and you open the Word of God because you know it's a source of the Spirit of Christ in you. And you say, hey, all right, coffee or the Word? Or as Pastor Andrew does, coffee and the Word. And you go, you know what? I'm going to connect with God. I'm going to connect with His Spirit. I'm going to allow my day, my life to be empowered. And you read the Word, and Jesus is the Word. So when you read the Word, you're building. Are you with me? And then you might go, hey, hold on. I can take all these thoughts and all these things I've got to do today, and I've got to, all these challenges I've got, and I can, I can stew them over in my head myself all day. And, or, or, hey, why don't I just take a little bit of a walk and, lay them at the feet of Jesus and ask Him to step into them. Involve Him in them. Jesus, my marriage, my family, my work, my this, my that. And you walk out of that place clothed with power. Amen? That's what Jesus wants. And when you do it and do it and do it and do it, you get addicted to it. You get addicted to the power that is in you to live the way that you know you should live. Amen? You know, whenever things are going wrong, you can always run into the throne room of God and He's going to accept you because the grace of God covers you. Amen? I've said this a lot. Grace of God protects you and your relationship with God. 
won't protect you from the consequences of sin. If you ran out here and stole a car, especially my car, I'm going to report you to the police and you might end up down at the local police station, right? Or anyone's car. Amen? If you walked out here and thumped someone on the nose just because you felt like it, we'd have to do something about it. Instant report would come out and you'd be in trouble. And you'd be all, you know what I mean? There's consequences to that. But you and God are always going to be right because God always wants to work with you to change you. That's what grace does. Amen? You can always step into it. You could be in jail and you can step into his throne room and you can say, God, I'm sorry. I don't know how I did that, but I need your help to not try and do that ever again. That's what God, that's what the grace of God is. Amen. Are you with me? It's a power that we need. It's resurrection power. This is why the world goes nuts over resurrection power. Because we're a new creation. We don't live the same anymore. Amen. Who wants to live for Jesus in this place? Come on. Raise your hand if you know you could live a better life for Christ. Honestly? Can we just leave it more for Him? Why don't we stand? Come on, right across the place. We walk into a new life through Him. Perfect sacrifice. Now we find ourselves as believers in a world that is by Him. Not by yourself, by Him. By Him. By Him you can overcome addictions. By Him you can overcome fear. By Him you can receive healing. Amen? By Him God can turn your circumstances around. By Him your marriage can be redeemed. By Him anything is possible. for a moment. Can we close our eyes? It's just, just a moment of worship. Come on. Just take a moment to connect with Jesus. Come on. just take an opportunity to make sure that every single person in this place has had an opportunity to walk through that door through Him. This is a plan 
plans set afoot by Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a plan created for a problem, and the problem was sin. And out of love, Jesus, and out of the Father's love, was sent as a perfect sacrifice. And He created a way. That's why it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I've got to tell you, there's no other prophet, no other person on this earth that's ever claimed to be sinless and perfect, only Jesus. Amen? No one's been proclaimed in the Word of God to be sinless, to be that perfect sacrifice. He's it. And if you're in this place and you haven't walked through that door, know that it is a plan of love for you. You were created. The Word of God says that God knows everyone. He's got the ability to gaze on you as if there's no one else else on this earth. He's omnipresent. He's staring. He's looking at you, not with eyes of vengeance or eyes of wanting to hurt you, He's staring, 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 waiting, waiting, waiting for that one time in your life where you one day turn around and acknowledge that He has loved you and always loved you. The Word of God says that God has always loved you before you became part of His kingdom. And He's waiting, waiting, waiting. And that salvation is simply us spinning around accepting His plan of His Son's perfect sacrifice and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior and bowing ourselves to that and accepting the salvation plan. That's what it is. And we enter through a doorway into a new life, a new creation. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That's why the Word of God says there's angels celebrating every time it happens. It's a non-stop celebration. So if you're in this place and you have any doubt that you walk through that door, I want to take a moment on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Please, the last thing I would want you to do, and I know most, all of us who are Bay City in this place, We've made this choice. I made this choice at 21. I remember wandering down from a back seat, just all confused, but knowing, felt like my body was being drawn there. But the fact is I was being drawn to salvation. Life changed. So we're going to pray a prayer in this place. And it's a powerful prayer. It's a life-changing prayer. And I'd love everyone in this place to join us prayer. And if you've never prayed this or you doubt that you have, or maybe you would want to rededicate yourself afresh on this Resurrection Sunday morning, you can. And let's pray this prayer together. Can we do that, church? Come on. Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept that you died on the cross for me. I accept your forgiveness of my sin. I accept your grace and your mercy and your righteousness. I accept it today. I accept today that I'm a child of God. I accept today that as your Bible tells me that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life, that eternity is set in my heart. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Savior. Your eye closed. If you prayed that as a rededication or first time, just, just lift one hand up. Give us a wave. see these people with their hands lifted from over there and over there. It's 
Spirit of God. Those people, we're going to have a chat with you afterwards. I'd love our team to chat with you. If you're a believer in this place, For some, you need to push a reset button. That's what I believe. Holy Spirit, t- today's going to be a reset button for some of you. You're going to start to try right now to do this Christian life by Him. Come on. That's you just make a commitment. I'm asking you to come out the front or anything. Just make a commitment. If that's you, make a commitment to him, not to me. I've got nothing to do with it. It's you in Jesus. Just sense of the Holy Spirit. Some of you just need to say, Jesus, I'm sorry for trying to do this by me. I want to now do this by you. I want to do it in you. I want to do it in your power. Spirit of God, we thank you for your love. Thank you that you could not display your love any more powerfully than sending your only son to die for us. Jesus, we thank you for the pain, the suffering, but you did it and of love for us. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our time and our attention. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, come on, everybody said, he loves Jesus. I'm in love. Love him, love him, love him. Yeah, I started watching. I know I'm slow. Everyone's been watching it. I started watching The Chosen. Oh, has anyone seen that? It messed me up. When Jesus meets Mary, did that mess anyone else up? The love, the acceptance. Christ. If you haven't seen The Chosen, it's a series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go home. Watch it. It's Easter. It might be on some channel somewhere, I'm sure. It might have bumped off the Easter bunny or whatever. I'm, I'm sure. But watch it. It's really worth, worth watching. It's beautiful. But I just love Jesus. So, speaking of Easter eggs, we'd like to give you some chocolate. Is that all right? Who likes chocolate? <laughs> so we're, we're going to invite the kids to come and give us some chocolate. But out there, who likes hot cross buns even more than chocolate? We've got good coffee, hot cross buns. God bless you, church. Have an, an amazing, amazing rest of your Easter weekend. We love your Bay City. God bless you. To see the ones with the ears, we've got some Easter eggs for you.
Hi Church, thanks for joining with us to Church Online today. It was great fellowshipping with you. For all details, go to www.baycitychurch.com. We love you Church.